ever thought, how on earth do I even start building an AI app? Like, what's RAG and how do I connect to my LLM? And what's up with these vector things that people keep talking about? Well, today is your lucky day because we're breaking it down step by step for you. Hey, I'm Linda Foinding, and I'm a principal product manager here at Oracle. And in just 15 minutes, I'm going to show you how to create an awesome AI app that actually works. I've got my brilliant developer buddy, Francis, who's also a product manager at Oracle, to guide us through the whole thing. Oh, and stick around to the end because we've got some game-changing tips that will make your AI app go to the next level. Francis, say hello to everybody. What's up, everyone? Okay, that was a mic drop moment, huh? But seriously, let's get into it. Francis, how do we even start building an AI app? Like, where do we begin? Well, Linda, I'd say you need to pick two main things, the AI embedding model and the database. Sounds simple, right? Trust me, it's game changer. Most people don't think about it, but it's super important. Wait, why is that so important? Well, first, you've got to decide on your AI embedding model. Like, are you going to use an open source one? What's allowed for your company? What's approved? And then the database. Linda, you know our boss is always changing her mind on the requirements for the apps we build. So we want to make sure we pick a database that's flexible and can serve multiple data types. I personally am a big fan of Oracle database and they have this new version 23AI is wild. It can handle any data type and any workloads. Look at all of these. And these aren't separate databases either. Okay, hold up. Now you're speaking my language. Okay, friends, you know I'm going to take care of you throughout this video. 23AI supports structured and unstructured. That means JSON, graph, and vector. All right, we've got the database locked down. Now what's next with the code? Okay, now we're diving into Python. First things first, you need to import the libraries to connect to the database. Then. We also need the Onyx model to get access to the AI stuff. 15 minute code term check. Onyx stands for Open Neural Network Exchange. It's a special file format for AI models that makes it easier to move them between different computer tools so they can run anywhere. 23AI supports any Onyx compliant model. Oracle 23AI can also import an embedding model in a secure way. But why does this even matter to you? the developer. Well, if you're building an app for a business, for example, security is huge. You can't just connect your embedding model to the open internet. That's like putting your private data out there for the whole world to see. Might as well put it on a billboard, right? This way, you can run AI models in a super secure way. Right, Francis? Right, Linda. It's all about keeping the data safe. All right. So how do we start coding this? First, we import the main libraries. These will let us connect to Oracle's database and get access to Oracle OCI. This is crucial for secure database connections. You've got your basics, the OS, which handles all of our operating system stuff, and then the Oracle DB to talk to your database. We also need to connect to OCI to connect to 23AI. Without it, we can't make the connection. Then, if you want to track how fast your processes are running, you can import time. This is totally optional. And of course, from OCI's generative AI inference models, we import the models to actually use them. Okay, cool. But what if I want to connect to an LLM, a large language model that's not on OCI? Could I do that too? Absolutely. You just need to specify which one you want to use, update the login and config details, and then swap out OCI for whatever service you're using. No new import statements are going to be needed. Just change the connection details. But we still want to use the Oracle database though, right? Yep, the database is the game changer. It's what makes our dev work easy. We're still using OCI for everything here, but the Oracle database lets us swap out the OCI part for any other provider. Okay, then let's connect to the database. We'll grab the username, password, and connection using Oracle database to connect. Once that's done, we're good to go. Wait, but what data are we working with here? All right, so we're going to fetch some JSON data. This is where we grab our data, from the app, you can see we're pulling customer info like their name, the loan amount um, that they're requesting, and much more. So this is the data we're going to display, right? We're using a select statement to grab the unstructured data? Yep, exactly. We're pulling the data from our loan records. We combine the customer profile with the loan info to create personalized prompts 
for our LLM. Okay, but how do we set the prompt for the LLM? Did you just write that manually? Yes. Hmm. Just define the prompt in a string format and add the required details. Since we're using the MetaLama model from OCI, the formatting is key. The more detail you add, the better the AI is going to perform. At the end, I'll have a prompt sample so that you can use it. Awesome, but are all prompts the same? No. Each model has its own way of handling prompts. For MetaLama, we format it this way, which helps us ensure that the AI knows exactly what to do. The more specific you are, the better your results. Otherwise, the AI might give you some random weird output. It'll hallucinate, essentially. So basically, you experimented with the model to see how it responded. Then you tweaked it with prompt engineering to get better results, right? Exactly. You have to be super specific about what you want to avoid. That way, the model won't start hallucinating and give out random stuff. Got it. So this is super important when building Genii apps. Exactly. Once you have the prompt and the task defined, you'll set up the evaluations. For example, we want to return the top three loan recommendations for the customer. And then we insert the data into the table? Yeah, we take the output from the database, do a little rag, and not just respond with the results, but also capture those results and put them into the table where we can use it for other things later, such as prompt engineering. Okay, 15-minute code term check. RAG is retrieval augmented generation. It's just a fancy way of saying that we're adding our company-specific data to the LLM in a secure way and using AI to do the thinking for us. But not on just some random data that we pull from the internet. On the app data, it helps the AI give more accurate results by pulling in real data rather than just guessing. Exactly. With RAG, the AI works directly with real data from the database, so it can make accurate, personalized recommendations. The AI tells us which loans are out of reach for the customers, what, re what loans they qualify for, and then we insert that into the table. So now we've got our model working. What's the next thing that's happening? Now we take that output, loan recommendations, and we insert it into the table for further processing. We filter out the just out of reach loans, and then display the top three loan recommendations for the customer. We also include an explanation of why those loans were recommended. And just like that, we're building an AI system that's connected to the live data. All right, folks, here's your first 15 minute code tip. The more specific you prompt, the more accurate. The AI's answers will be. If you leave things too vague, it'll run wild. Yup. Once we're done processing that data, we need to define a few things the compartment ID, the location of our configuration file, and OCI endpoint. Once we have those, we can proceed to call the client. For everyone watching, we'll flash the config file on the screen now so you can follow along. Then we can connect to the Gen AI model and get our answers. Yay, so this is where we set up the chatbot. Yup, the next step is turning it into a chatbot experience. We specify that we're using the chat model. We also define the compartment ID and the chat request parameters. These are just the basic settings for the Gen AI model. And here we choose which model we want to use. This is where we specify the model that's available as part of Oracle Cloud. Developer friends, these are the models supported in Oracle Cloud as of today's recording. I've also linked the source for these models in the description below. Now, just to make sure I understand, you can use other LLMs that aren't part of OCI. Could you explain how to do that a little bit? Of course, if you're using a different LLM, like let's say Cohere, for example, mm -hmm. you would just adjust the configurations. Instead of using OCI settings, you would set up the configuration for the other provider or whatever model you're using, and then specify the parameters accordingly. So quick 15 minute code tip for you all. The whole setup is customizable. We're here to keep you in the loop with what's new, what's hot, and what's popping. Did you know that Oracle Database isn't just available on Oracle Cloud, but also on Google Cloud, Azure, and AWS? So if you're building an app on Google Cloud or Azure and using their models, all you need to do is get the environment for Google or Azure, set the endpoint, and voila, you can use their models too. The best part, you're not restricted. Whether you're building an AI app on Oracle Cloud or elsewhere, you can still use Oracle Database to store and manage your data anywhere. Exactly, Linda. And that means you're not restricted to Oracle Cloud. You can still build your app with the Oracle Database no matter where your models are hosted. 
Cool. Now, once your model is set up, the next part of the code involves cleaning up the responses. We're going to be dealing with a lot of data, so you need to clean up things like unnecessary search and replace those values, right? Right. So we're handling things like just out of reach loans, your regular loans, all of those. This section of the code removes any irrelevant data from the output. Once that's done, we store the cleaned up data into the database for further processing. Now for my 15 minute coders. I got you, I'm here to take care of you, but you gotta follow along here with me. On the one hand, if you wanna go for the super duper complicated path, you could take that clean data and install it into Neo4j or another graph database. But with Oracle 23 AI, Francis, can you process graph data along with vector and relational data in the same place? Yep, absolutely, Linda. Oracle 23 AI handles all types of data, structured, unstructured, graph, spatial, and vector, all in the same database. Wait a minute. I thought Oracle was a relational database. It is a relational database, but Oracle can handle more than just relational data. We can manage JSON, relational, vector, and graph data all in the same place. We handled it all. Okay, Oracle. Way to keep it current and make the life of a developer easier. <laughs> all right. So, next. We check if there is already information available in the table. If there is, we delete it and insert it so we have the most up-to-date data, such as our most up-to-date and new loan recommendations, and we put that in the table. We're always working with the latest data. This way, we keep our tables current with the most relevant responses. Got it. So we're cleaning, updating, and ensuring that we're always working with the latest loan recommendations. All right, on to the pièce de résistance. Let's show everyone how to build a chatbot with the same data. First, we'll ask a question. The first thing we can do is check if the embedding already exists. Wait a minute. What's an embedding again? I'm glad you asked. An embedding is a vector. It's a numerical representation of your data. There are all these vector databases out there. They've been out for like, what, 20 years or something? But with AI, 23AI makes it easy to store these vector data types directly into the database. You don't need any other databases. Okay, so a vector embedding is just a fancy way of describing the data using numbers. So we can take the data like loan recommendations and convert it into a numerical representation. That way the AI can understand it. Then we determine the distance between the number sets so that the closer sets are similar and further sets are not as similar and have a larger vector distance. Exactly. For example, we take our loan recommendations where they're just out of reach or they're qualified or the top ones we convert those into the embeddings. We do the same for the user's questions. Okay, so the loans we inserted earlier into the table are being converted into embeddings, or should I say into numbers for the AI to figure out the distance? Yes. Everything we insert, whether it's loan recommendation or other data, gets converted into embeddings. The database has this vector distance function that compares the distances. Perfect. I got it now. So what's next? So. Here's the process. First, we insert the full response from the AI into the database. Then we update the data by vectorizing the recommendations using our Onyx embedding model. The important thing here is that we're using the database for the vector store. We're not sending the data outside to another service. Security is a priority. I told you, Linda, Oracle has thought of everything. I know, right? So using the database keeps the data secure. But why would someone choose to do this instead of the data inside the database rather than sending it to an external provider? Security is the big reason. By keeping everything in the database, your customer data stays safe and isn't exposed to the outside world. If you send the data to an external AI provider, there's a risk that someone else might see that data. Other vector databases don't necessarily do that, but Oracle has security baked in. Exactly. If, for example, I'm applying for a loan and you send my data to an external AI provider, my private information can end up being exposed. But by processing everything within the Oracle database, it stays secure and controlled. That's why we prefer doing everything in the database. So once we've embedded the recommendations, we do the same for the user question. We generate the embedding for the question using the same process as the recommendations. Cool. So in short, we insert that data into the table, and now we've got it stored and ready for vectorization. 
Once it's in there, we can do some magic with vectors and compare the embeddings for the loans with the embeddings for the user's question. That's right. We use cosine distance to find the best match. But we could use other distance metrics like Euclidean, dot product, Manhattan, just to name a few. We compare the embeddings of the loans and the questions, get the best one, and that's our answer. And we're still using Gen AI to return the most up-to-date, clean answer. Yuck. Once we get that top match, we send it through Gen AI with a task to give us the cleanest, most accurate response, and that's it. Boom. Chatbot done. Wow. So that's how we build a chatbot. Yep. It combines everything. Embeddings, vector comparisons, and Gen AI processing to generate the best possible response. So there you have it, friends. We built an AI chatbot and an AI app that uses real data, not just random AI guesses. We combined enterprise data, secure processing, and advanced AI techniques to give users personalized and accurate results. That's right. And the best part is the whole process is secure and scalable. So you can build complex AI apps with confidence. That's amazing. Anything else you want to add, Francis? Yep. Just remember, the more specific you are with your prompts and data, the better your AI will work. And of course, the most important, follow us on LinkedIn and stay tuned for the next video where we're going to dive deeper into building apps with OCI. Right. And check out our Oracle Live Labs for a step-by-step -step guide on how we built this app. The link is in the description box below. And for a special surprise, we have a link to the code in our Live Lab. You can take the code and use it to start your own application. All right. My name is Linda Poinding. My name is Francis Regalado. And this was 15 Minute Code. Catch you next time, coders.